How do you cancel plans with friends but not feel guilty? You use AI. This AI generator takes instructions and builds an excuse for your friends. You don't go out with them? Fine. You want to miss a brunch? Cool. Baby shower? Gone. Why would I make this? Because my friends. No, I'm joking. Because I wanted to learn the new chat GPT API, which has been very cool, but mostly because I've been trying to help people improve their tech careers. As much as you can stack your CV with previous employment places, you can also actually do it with portfolio pieces, which is why I wanted to show today. I originally went on Twitch to stream me creating this, which is something I think I'm going to be doing more in the future. There will be a link somewhere to my Twitch, probably in the description. Okay, so the structure of the video is going to be A, how I made it, B, why is it useful as a portfolio piece in terms of getting jobs, and then C, how to actually leverage this approach in the future to improve your career in non-job related ways. At some point, I'll make a video breaking down why I learned from ChatGPT. So if you're more interested in the tech than the career stuff, there'll be a link somewhere to the video. So how I made it, the tech stack is Node.js, React, Next. It's not TypeScript, it's CSS. It's not like style components or anything like that. This was taken directly from the Open API Quick Start tutorial. There will be a link in the description, but essentially OpenAI kind of made a little mock project with Next and React to, to get you set up. And then this is deployed on Netlify, which is really easy. Connect straight to GitHub and you can just set targets for deployment. Okay, the juicy stuff, prompt generation. I use the chat GPT function called completion. Basically what this does is it has a backlog of previous questions and answers. And based on how similar your question is to questions it's had in the past, it brings you an answer statistically similar to those answers. So it is kind of a predictive model based on previous texts it's passed. Getting a personality on the machine could be tricky. I had to experiment a lot with phrasing. So different ways that you write a question will actually change the way the answer comes out, which I'm assuming is because, you know, it was based on question answer models that is a pass through. The closer you make your question to original questions that's been passed with and how the correct answer with, the more likely you are to get a juicy response. Using phrases that are not common, it's not likely to make matches and it would almost repeat what I said instead of bringing something new to the table, which is why we're trying to get it to do. Sometimes less is more, sometimes more is more. It's kind of hard to know, but sometimes it's actually useful to just add a lot of like proses of additional context. So like a sentence explaining something, then something else then how this affects that. And then when you ask your question at the end, you've added a lot of context and it's got more to feed on. Really does depend on what you want, but experiment with these things gave me very different results. The link is in the description, by the way, have a play around, see what you think. You can randomize it, you can just ask it questions. Okay, so that's kind of the technical side. Now it's gonna be a little bit more about the career side. Why is that useful as a portfolio piece? Unless you have a job working with AI, if you think about it, you're never really going to get the chance to do it in any form of professional capacity or to be able to take it to employers saying, hey, I've done this. So having a portfolio piece on your CV, you kind of do get to experiment with different skills. Not necessarily that saying AI is the be all or end all, it's more just the fact that you get to work on whatever it is that you want and have a working example showing that you can do something. It also shows a willingness to learn and staying active, especially if what you're using is like a, a modern technology or framework, then it shows that you're staying up to date, which is, you know, it's always going to stand out. Unless Unless you're getting jobs or free work, which by the way, if you can, I really would advise it. That's an excellent option to stack up your CV. You don't always have additional experience at your job, which means it's hard to bring extra eyeballs. The CV game, realistically, I know it sounds stupid, but it's just, it's jumping off the page. It's when people see your CV, why are they stopping on you? Which is why I use Sexy Tech for this. AI right now is a very big buzzword. And recruiters love seeing stuff like this. That aside, you get to work at your own pace. You can do this alongside other projects. So this took me a few evenings, you know, instead of me having to really commit to, let's say I did get unpaid work and they have expectations of me. I knocked this out in a few hours around my already busy work and gym schedule. And then finally, you actually get to show your personality a little bit. So I made an excuse generator, which yes, yeah, I can't sell it. It's not super functional, but it's fun. And it's something that I actually enjoy it. Make something you like. This is a real chance to you to show your employer what you're like in your element. How to leverage this approach for future jobs. So if you make projects and you put them out, you can actually reach a broader audience, especially if you use something like sexy tech, like AI, which is probably why you clicked on the link, to be honest, that's why I used. And it's a way of getting eyeballs and jumping on trends. By doing this, people become more aware of you. You can actually network a lot easier and just having the awareness on yourself can make it easy for you to be found by recruiters or potential hirers. What's interesting about doing portfolio pieces as well is you don't just have to be for a CV, right? If you're trying to get a job in a very specialist area, you can make particular functional pieces that are useful or will get the attention of people in that area so that you can approach them for networking or job roles. It's basically content marketing. You don't have to go all full blown with, you know, promoting it and everything like that, but just having something there. So it's not only do you have something to show, but it's easier for people to find you very beneficial. And then finally, you get genuine experience and community. So when I say genuine experience, you can kind of tackle any level of problem that you actually want to tackle if you think about it. Like, why can't you just take on, doesn't have to be serious, you don't have to sell it. 
but you could take on quite a big complex architectural problem like spend your weekends doing it it doesn't matter how long it takes because you're just doing it in your free time it's like free reign mode on sims like there's no real consequences you're in a stable environment you know no expectations you can completely prepare for a job role if you wanted if you're trying to get into devops or something you could try spin up big services try run traffic to it. it doesn't even have to be real traffic you could run dummy traffic to it you can get into circles of people making things you can get around the environment which is also likely to have other projects that people are doing you get involved with they also might be hiring it, it, a lot of potential for just being visible and being in communities that are doing similar things and there's no reason not to be doing it even me doing content is kind of an example of this like i've met so many cool people doing this already that are just also on their little content journey or they're building stuff or people just asking for advice about career i actually don't have anything around myself so for the most part i'm just trying to help people i am building a brand and eventually when people do come to me when they either want to hire me for a very specialist like consultancy role or even if I decide, you know, it's time I probably sell something, I've actually got a lot of eyeballs on me and a brand to, to show my specialty in a certain area, right? If I'm making videos showing myself programming and building stuff and portfolio pieces, if I go to a company and say, look, I can do this service for you, and they check my brand and they're like, oh, he's legit. I'm not saying you have to go like full brand mode, create all the banners and get someone to edit your video. That's not what I'm saying. But having a brand is very beneficial. Not only could people find you easier, but it's just, it's a demonstration of your expertise. That's what you're doing. You're putting out evidence that you can do what you say you can do. And the more you have of that, the better. Oh, that was a lot of talking. Okay. So this is just my experience, but I do hope it was useful. All the links are in the description below. If you know someone that's trying to upskill themselves, they're not entirely sure what to do in the tech field, portfolio pieces are a massive way to improve yourself. Please send them this video so they can make a more informed decision. Thanks guys.